great to see you. We've had some battles over the years. I think we first uh-huh. met when we was probably about 14, 15. I was at Brentford, you was at Watford, obviously. And I think my first introduction to you was an under 15 match where our manager said to us before, if anyone pulls out of a challenge with that keeper, I'm going to do you. And then after about five, ten minutes, someone put me through on the left wing (laughs) and I felt the collision. I rolled over. Things were in place. (laughs) You had the ball and I thought, thank thank God I'm alive. But uh, you've had a fine career over the years and uh, it's great to have you on this show. Thank you for first of all for inviting me onto the show. But you would have played in 89 then? Yeah, you beat us in the FA Youth Cup. Yeah, we had no chance against you. You might have scored. You, did we do two uh, or I'm trying to think, did I score? Look, we was Division 3 back then and giving out our all, but you guys had some tremendous players. And the other and the other occasion was my England debut, under-17s. I roomed with you and I ended up breaking my leg, not because of you, but because of I got kicked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So, sweet, sweet. yeah, you was part of all of that, I remember. Um, yeah, I Alex, you even gave me a little lift home, not lift home, but you walked me from the top of my top of my road to my house. Because I was on crutches. <laughs> Those were the days, man. Those were the days. So, tell us, what what are you up to these days? Well, as you can see, I mean, I, I've been doing a lot of work with utilities to trying to uh, improve the situation with grassroots yeah. football. Um, boys and girls. I mean, really, just anything involved or um, sort of anyone who has an influence on, uh, on grassroots for saving money for football clubs or families. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's been a big part of my focus over the last 18 months. I feel I'm more involved in football now than I was when I was playing. Yeah. Because you know what it's like as a player, you sort of like, I, I trained then I got to play. Yeah. Uh, with this, you actually get to see the world of football more so than just you just being a, um, a, an athlete within it. With Utilita, we've got Brentford fans tuning in. Uh, how would they get involved in something like this? Well, the, the Football Rebooted um, is the sort of the main thing at the moment. And, you know, essentially what we're looking at is a million pairs of, of boots that are, are still usable, but mm-hmm. being unused, i.e. in the back of the car. I think I've probably got a pair in the back of my car. Um, in the cupboards, somewhere in the house, you know, the boots which are either not used because the person's got new ones, which is quite often yeah. the case, or not used because people have just stopped playing the game. If they can be put into football rebooted, then there's an opportunity to redistribute these boots to the um, to people who need them. Generally kids who are growing, feet are growing out of the, uh, the boots they've already had. And so not only saving money, uh, but saving the environment or protect, trying to protect the environment because the boots will end up in landfill. And what we have mm. done, and this is where Brentford fans can really get involved, it's become more localised in the sense that anyone who's distributing boots or, or handing in uh, to the Brentford area, those boots will be redistributed around the Brentford area, again, saving on the environmental impact. But really, Marcus, there's, go- there's going to be kids who just want to go out there or people who just want to go out there and have a kick around and pretend knowing full well that they're never going to make it as a professional football. And as I say, that's the beauty of football. It's not about elitism. It's just about uh, opportunity to participate. That's great stuff. I remember those youth team days, you know, boots were at a, boots were at a premium. And if yeah. you could try and get an old pair of boots from the old pros now, you're laughing. So the, yeah. we used to exchange boots for every day, most years in at the club, because um, you just wanted to be looking like a pro. You wanted what the pros had. So boots are so vital to obviously the kids today. And, and this sounds like a really great initiative that you're doing. So well done on that. Let's bring it back to where we are today. Brentford, Watford, you know, we had two great games last year. Um, I thought the first one at Vicarage Road, we, we probably played some of our best football in that first 45 minutes. I remember doing commentary on that game and it was really good stuff by Brentford on the day. You know, we didn't quite hold out, but it was, a, it was a good result in terms of showing our capabilities as a, as a team that's looking to produce the goods in the Premier League. Um, mm-hmm. The second game was, um, by the time we played Watford in the second game, they um, had already been you know, promoted and it just seemed that they lacked a little stardust on the day. They were just going through the motions. Um, but both teams have got promoted, which is great. Um, two teams that I've played for, you know both clubs very well, as you know. Mm-hmm. But, 
since Ranieri's come in, what, what has really changed with um, the sort of mentality at the club? You know, it wasn't a great start of the season, um, and then he's come in. So, what, what has really changed? This is a, a crucial match, and I think what Ranieri has. Uh, Again, I'm talking to Brentford fans here, but one of the, you talk about that st uh, magical dust, if you like, is that he knows how to play the mind games. Mm -hmm. um, when he was successful with Leicester, uh, you know, he took Leicester's chances of doing anything down, even to the point of, we're looking at 40 points. He was on 39 points halfway mm -hmm. through the season, and he was talking about the 40 point um, barrier. So he will play a lot of mind games. And I think in that sense, he's been able to get his team. Uh, yeah, get a good group of players, good quality group of players to uh, to kind of maximise their performances because there's a couple of battles here. It's three points in the Premier League uh, to keep them in a, in a healthy position and it's also beating the side that got promoted with you last year. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, do you see Watford looking at this fixture as one that they should win? Watford aren't in a position to be saying should anything. That's the difference. And I, I say, when you're and I've been in that position where we've been, you know, bottom, bottom, towards the bottom of the table, um, just above relegation or, or mid-table. Every position in the league at any given moment in the season mm -hmm. has a different emphasis on it. And I don't think Watford are in a position where they say they should win. Of course, they they will want to win, just as Brentford will. Mm -hmm. um, and they should think that because of the two of you getting promoted last season, that they have some kind of advantage with the... Uh, um, you know, in that fixture, but should win doesn't happen, Mark. Mark, you played the game long enough, man. Ah, uh, no, I've got lots of questions, though, man. Come on. <laughs> uh, and, and again, this is the thing about, uh, as I say, with Ranier, and I think the you know the best result for them was that game at Everton, where you look at it, you think you're never in a good, relatively good position. Watford in a bad position, and no one would have envisaged Watford going up there and I think it was 5-2 in the end, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and th this is the beauty. I mean, they, we talk about the Premier League, obviously, because it's the top league, but football is unpredictable. And I know this is a mantra that the, uh, the Brentford manager talks about a lot. If the performances are there, then th there's a chance of getting the result. Yeah. And that's what he does. You go for the performance and they, if you don't win but you put the performance in, then uh, you know, that's out of your hands to, to a degree. I like the look of um, Emmanuel Dennis. Um, mm -hmm. So he only costs like 3.6 million from Club Bruges. How, how has mm -hmm. he sort of fared with, with yourself? Not, not too bad. I mean, for him to be notching those sort of goals and assists, then I think that's a, a, a testament to, to a great season so far. I'm looking forward to the game. I'm sure you are as well. So um, I just want to thank you for your time that you spent with us. Um, it's great seeing Thank you, you my old friend. Long time no see. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll meet up pretty soon. Let's have a little drink or something. I don't know. But really, thank yeah. you for, for coming on. And um, good luck for the rest of this season with you, Philippa. Marcus, thank you very much for having me on. I'll be down soon.